Hello everybody, welcome here. Today I am going to be doing a little bit of dyeing. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you may recognize this at the end. This is actually from a few months ago that I filmed my dyeing process. I originally thought, well, I'm gonna try to knit it up and show you from beginning to very end, but let's just say I'm gonna show you from beginning to hand spun yarn. And so I hope you'll enjoy watching this process. You can see that I am starting with my undyed wool. I have it in this big roaster pan, and this is actually 200 grams of Falkland wool that I got from Legacy Studios in uh, Cochrane, Alberta. I ordered it online, and I've really been happy with the fiber I have ordered from there in the past. And I showed the dyes that I'm using at the beginning. I like to use ProCam dyes for the most part, and this is blue spruce and chocolate brown. Now I had this vision of these really um, kind of warm winter tones of the chocolate brown with this green called blue spruce but it's actually this deep green I just love this color and so I'm just layering on the colors also this is just for myself I wanted this for myself so I'm not being super precise I'm not measuring with my um, precise measurements or anything I don't plan on replicating it this is just purely for fun and enjoyment and so I'm just mixing up the dyes as I go trying it out if I want more intensity I add more dye and in areas if I want less I go with less and it's just it's a lot more fun that way, but it's definitely uh, a lot less precise. Now I have my fiber kind of snaked back and forth throughout this and I really I don't want like true stripes. I want kind of the colors to mesh together but I do want there to be distinct colors not just like a blend. So those are kind of my guidelines going into this. I do need to make sure to be getting the bottom and you'll see that coming up too. Um, it doesn't absorb all the way through like you might imagine it would if you've done dyeing. I'm sure you know that. Uh, you really do have to check the bottom uh, because where you place the dye like where you pour it on top is really um, where the color strikes the heaviest or the most intense so I'm just kind of paying attention to that adding a little pushing it around I don't want to be too aggressive with it this is a non super wash wool and so I do have to be careful of felting uh, but at the same time I want to make sure that the color is going all the way through each part of the roving and not just the outside with a white inside I have had that happen when I first started dyeing I will was not um, careful enough to push it all the way through it and uh, yeah so I do try to watch for that uh, but it is that balance of not wanting to agitate it too much uh, while it's wet risk of felting but also wanting that color to be a little more vibrant my favorite part of the dye process is really just like layering on the colors and making it up as you go along. It's just a lot of fun to see um, how it works and it's surprising to me every time even though I've done quite a lot of dyeing at this point. It always kind of turns out a little different and trying new dyeing techniques and everything does change the look. Here you can see I'm lifting and placing it underneath on those same parts where I put it at the top. So again just trying to make sure that color is fully saturated to get a nice um, heavy the dye coat. On non-superwash wools it is a little more of a challenge to get vibrant colors. It's more likely um, that they turn out a bit more faded on non-superwash compared to superwash. Um, here chocolate browns coming in. You can see it's a really nice brown color. I really like working with this one as well. I've just done it on yarn so far not on roving uh, but I like that really um, warm dark brown color. I should also give you a little preview coming up. I started spinning this on my beta tester of the Plyology spinning wheel, which I did a video on back in last January, I think, which I got to test out. And they let me hang on to it because I did order the final version. And uh, I, in the process of spinning is when I received the spinning wheel. So you'll get to see kind of my first spin with it. And uh, I'll talk about it a little more when we get to that step, but just a little teaser of what is to come. I'm really excited about it and I'm really happy to have the final version. I really feel like they did a good job of um, just working on all the feedback that they got from the people that tested it and made some really positive changes uh, for their final spinning wheel version. 
So once I get all my dyes layered on, I will be putting this in the oven. I do like to do that with roving is to like bake it and get it up to temperature that way rather than do it on a pot on the stove. Although I mean, once in a while I choose that method as well, but I just am keeping on layering things on. And sometimes even after I bake it, especially for myself, I'll go back in with more color if I am not satisfied with how vibrant it is. Here you can see it's pretty, it looks pretty saturated, um, but it's surprising how much it can change while it is in the baking process or the heating, the setting, all of that. So I hope you guys all had a good summer. I know I've been a little bit absent here. I've done a few making updates and I actually have two of these kind of spinning dyeing type videos uh, that I that are all filmed, but I just have not gotten to sit down and edit them and put it together, all of that. So I did, this is one of them and I do have one more that I do hope to do in the future at some point. Um, we'll just have to see when time allows to get that other one put together and put up. I'm using my my spoon to check that all my dye is exhausted and it all seems to be running clear. Okay, so I know I was showing you my dyeing with the green and with the chocolate brown and are you ready for what it looks like? Now, sometimes in this situation, I would redo it, layer some more colors on, but I thought it was really interesting and fun, so I left it. Even though I didn't get too much of a visual to show you while it was wet, I dried it and this is what it looks like now. So much chocolate brown, hey? It's so interesting. The color definitely split. You could tell the areas where um, the magenta in the chocolate brown mix were striking first. And some areas of this really show that reddish orange color. It's not throughout the whole thing, but there's definitely some of that that comes. And you know, I have worked with a lot of dyes in the past and usually if they split, that's kind of what happens is the red strikes first and uh, the blues are a little slower to absorb and sometimes it ch really changes the look. That's the splitting of the dye. Uh, but there's still some of those deeper brown colors that I was hoping for. And to be honest, I'm not disappointed, even though I kind of had a vision of like this solid chocolate brown with that green. I think it's really fun how all of this turned out. Definitely not what I expected, but fun nonetheless. So this is what the 200 grams of Falkland looked like, looks like. And uh, so should we get to spinning? See what it looks like as a final yarn. So to prep this fiber, I am splitting it, just pulling it in half and then in half again to make smaller quantities and also split up all of these bright colors. You can see my ends are a little tough. Oh, got some help. And uh, it did felt just the teeniest bit right on those loose ends. So I do have a plan that I want to spin this a little bit thinner or like to make an effort to spin it thinner than like my go-to. Um, and I also want to try and add a little more twist than I usually do as well. That's really something I've been experimenting with lately, um, whether to add more twist in this in the singles or in the ply. And I've just been trying it out and trying to knit with the results to see what I like. Again, it's just all about that experimentation and seeing what is my preference. And so that's kind of my thought going into this. But for now, just doing this prep work. So I don't know how much you can hear my background noise, but that's really the big barrier right now to getting videos put up is just there's a lot of noise in my house. And for something like this, there's a lot of voiceover required and it's hard to get pockets of quiet so that you can actually hear what I'm saying while I'm doing it. Um, I'm sure any moms out there can relate. Some of these clips I actually talked through as I was recording it and when I played it back all you could hear was how noisy my house was and you could barely hear what I was saying. So we are trying it this way um, but I just I hope you can understand that there is <laughs> just some limitations to being able to um, put together these types of videos. So I've started to get a bit of a backlog of hand spun yarn. I'm looking for ideas if any of you have any of some of the things you like to make with your hand spun. Um, I've kind of been scouring the internet and Instagram to see what other people have been making. Just looking for ideas. You know, in the last few months I've really got into cross stitch and I haven't done as much knitting, uh, but I've still been enjoying spinning from time to time. Um, and I feel like it's a lot faster. So I end up with a lot of yarn that is waiting for its final usage. And just for me, I like to 
kind of be using the things that I'm making. And so it's kind of at a stopping point right now. I haven't been doing as much lately, but I'm still really enjoying it. You can see this is the beta tester, the original version of the Pliology spinning wheel that I am using in this clip. It's what I started spinning this skein on, um, but you will see we get a little upgrade about halfway through here. Having an electric spinning wheel has really changed spinning for me. It's made it so much more portable and easy to do. Like here, I am in a separate room, whereas my other one, it would basically only fit in my living room. And I found that especially challenging having a large wheel spinning with lots of little kids around and worrying about their fingers and things like that. It was very much only select times that it would work to use my spinning wheel. Where something like this is so easy. I can do it at the table or here on my desk and it's up. Up and I don't have to worry about it nearly as much as I do with my traditional wheel. I understand that's probably not an appeal for everyone, but it really felt like a game changer for me. All right, so here I am using the new Pliology spinning wheel. This is like the final version that's available on their website, and I'm going to be using it to ply. Now I'm doing a two ply of this yarn, and like I said, I was trying to keep it really thin and a little bit higher twist, and so it's a little hard to see what's going on with those really thin plies, but that's what's happening here. I am trying to get the two ply onto the bobbin, and you know, I know not everyone's a big fan of plying, but I really like this step. I feel like you can kind of go faster and just like let your hands do the work and pay a little less attention as far as like drafting goes um, to me that requires a bit more um, but yeah like I said it's just so handy to have it <laughs> small and able to fit on the table maybe you can tell there's a lot of chaos around but I don't need a lot of space to be able to do this well I'm still in the middle of the action of my house and there's a bunch of other stuff going on like I said be thankful that the original video is muted and uh we're stuck with the voiceover here instead. <laughs> My kids love to sit down at the table and do like arts and crafts um, and not really so much planned, you know, follow my instruction and do this craft, but just having, you know, unique art supplies on hand that they can come up with sometimes their own things or I'll help find them patterns and things and it just keeps them busy and I think it's so good for them to be practicing those skills already. I've actually thought of maybe doing a video about some of our favorite arts and craft type things to have on hand and ways to use them for younger kids. I don't know if that's the sort of thing you guys would be interested in. I know it's a little off my usual making content, but you know, let's be honest, I haven't been making a lot of content because I do mostly kid stuff. <laughs> that's uh, kind of what most of my life is about these days. Anyways, I've kind of thought about branching out and doing something like that, but I don't no, first of all, if anyone would be kind of interested in it and also just putting together the time and everything to do that. You can tell there's a theme in all of this that there really are not enough hours in the day <laughs> that I wish there were. So till then, I'm just going to do what I can, a little bit of crafting for me, a little bit of crafting with the kids and occasionally sharing what I'm up to with you guys here. Okay, so these shots, once it, the bobbin is more full, I just love the way that uh, the colors blend together. I wish it was in focus here. I think it is coming up, I hope, in the next clip. But um, all those colors blending together just looks so perfectly autumnal and um, just perfect for fall. I don't really have a plan for this yarn in the end. It ended up being like Falkland is a little bit woollier um, than some of my other options, but I think it would be really nice and warm. I nice for a hat or something. I do have the 200 grams, so I'm just kind of planning on what it should become, but I don't have any firm plans here at this point. All right, you can see it better now. I love the barber pulling areas and the way that the colors blend together. Again, it's just, it turned out even better than I imagined, although it is different than I thought it would be. Once again, part of the fun of spinning yarn, seeing the way that it changes in every step of the process, but it certainly does make it hard to plan ahead what to make um, and even when I do, I usually end up changing my plans because again, it just doesn't turn out the way that maybe I thought it would and it would be better suited for something else. That certainly does add a challenge in that I finished this like three months ago and it's still just sitting, waiting for inspiration to strike for what to make it into. This is what the final bobbin shot looks like. There's definitely some thinner areas, some areas that are thinner than I would have liked, uh, where there's just a little too much twist in it. Um, it's not super duper even, but it is consistently thinner than kind of what my 
go-to hand spun is, which is a plus for me. I've really been trying to experiment with that and it does sometimes take a little more thinking to get it that way. So I'm just going to wind it up on my Nitty Naughty here and give it a good soak and see how that changes things. I know it always does. Um, and it really might help because some areas are feeling a little bit ropey and overspun. So again, risk of all of that. And it's one of those things that it was in the single. So then when I applied it together, there are just a few spots where where it kind of lined up that both spots had a highly spun area um, and that those are kind of the problem zones, I guess, but it's not bad. I think it'll still be great to knit with um, just in trying to analyze what I did right and what I did wrong. <laughs> That's kind of my conclusion on this yarn at this point. So as I wind it off, I just have my bobbin on the wheel in the neutral position. And I really like being able to use it like this um, just to keep it still. And it just makes it so quick and to not have to worry about what's going on with my bobbin. This is especially good since I don't have a lazy Kate to use for these steps, um, but it works great just like this. All right, so here is the reveal of my final yarn. This is what it looks like all wound up. I'm gonna be honest, this is shot like three months later from that last clip. <laughs> this was just done today. And uh, yeah, this is what it looks like. I think it looks, I love the areas where the browns and the greens are really mixing together. Um, but you can see there's that one of those overspun threads. I don't think that's been a huge problem, but there are a few areas where it is a bit overspun. So this is what I ended up with. Thank you so much for coming along this journey and give me some ideas. What should I make with it? Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.